In this presentation, we will continue on to part number 23 of our C Corporation Comprehensive Problem, focusing in on estimated payments. Here we are in our form 1120. We've been working with the calculation of the tax on the first page of the 1120. And then, of course, we're going to have to deal with the amount of payment. So notice what we have on the first page of the 1120. We have the calculation of basically the taxable income on line 30, then the tax calculation here. Now, we have then are going to have payments that will be made for the C corporation because unlike an S corporation or partnership, it is not a flow through entity, but is taxed at the level of the corporate level. Therefore, we should have estimated payments in a similar way that you would have for a sole proprietorship so for, or for a uh, individual tax return, a form 1040. We're used to making our estimated payments, taking them out of our wages as we go. And then we compare the tax at the end of the year to the payments that we have made. Hopefully we made more and get a refund at the end of the year. Uh, the C corporation is similar in that way. You can think of it almost like an entity or, you know, a person in and of itself. It has basically rights that are similar to an individual rights in that uh, it can own property and whatnot. And therefore it also has the obligation of paying taxes. Unlike some of the other flow through entities, remember the Schedule C is going to flow through. Obviously, it'll be on the Form 1040 and the ultimate tax will be on the Form 1040. If it was a Schedule C sole proprietorship partnership, you're talking about a flow through entity separate tax return, which will then flow through to the individual partner 1040s. Uh, S Corporation, once again, separate tax return, but still has that flow through to the individual 1040s of the owners of the S Corporation. A C Corporation, however, pays taxes on the C corporation level. So we have to do the same kind of thing. We've calculated the taxable income. We've calculated the tax. We've, we're dependent on the software to basically, to, to some degree, typically, to help us with the calculation of the tax once we get the taxable income. Then we need to do the other side of the, of the transaction, which is how many estimated payments were made for the current time period. The detail for that is gonna be on schedule J. That's gonna be on the third page. So if we scroll on over to the third page, We'll see Schedule D, uh, J, which will have the tax cal calculation in Part 1. And then we got the payments that are going to be down below. So the payments, we've got 2018 and so on, and then estimated payments. I'm going to jump to the data input screen. I'm going to right-click and jump to the data input screen. Now, if you've worked with a uh, similar, this is similar to a 1040. So if you've worked with a 1040 and someone that has a Schedule C business, then that in that situation, they're not getting withholdings that are going to cover their taxes typically from a W-2 income and therefore are going to be needing to make quarterly payments. Well, we basically have a similar situation with the C Corporation. Uh, the C Corporation is going to have to pay their own taxes. They're going to have to basically make the, the quarterly payments. So we're going to have to get that information. One, we check the prior year to see if there was any carryover from the prior year of taxes. Now, if we were working in tax software that we had done in the prior year we had worked their information in the tax software this is another thing that would roll forward from the prior year into the current year and we would have the correct estimated payments that was in the system in the prior year the only difference the only problem would be if the iris had any kind of changes you know if they if they audited or had some kind of problem with it and and if they uh, adjusted it but in any case typically that would roll forward now, also note that that means that if we were to get another tax return, if we didn't do this this prior year tax return in this software, uh, but we we got the prior year tax return from the client that was done in some other software, it would probably be best to take that entire tax return, put it into the other so into our software in the prior year, and then roll it forward because this is just another area we saw a carryover. That this happens is just the information could roll over as well in terms of the where they're located officer information and that kind of stuff will uh, roll over properly and now we have of course the estimated payments and any carryover from the prior period all those things are a lot easier to check it's harder to put the data input in the prior year but it's easier to check once you put it into the prior year and then roll it forward so best practice would typically be to do that we're here here we're going to take that information and put it directly into our, our data in the current year. Okay, so we have the 80, so this is gonna be our data here. We're gonna say these are the estimated payments. Now, so we have an overpayment from the prior year of the 80,000, and then we're gonna say we made quarterly payments of the 75,000. So I'm gonna say we had a rollover of 80,000. Uh, let's see, let's do that one more time. The rollover here, 80,000, 
And then we've got the estimated payments for quarters one, two, three, and four. And I'm going to put 75,000 on these, 75,000 here, 75,000 for three, and 75,000 for four. So there's going to be our payments. If we then jump over to our forms, then let's take a look at what happens within our forms. We've got the 80,000 payments and then we've got the quarterly payments which obviously uh, are 300 which bring us to the 380 does that check out to what we have here 380 in payments now remember you you need to make those payments basically quarterly because just like with a form uh with a 1040 individual tax return the irs wants their money as they go so you need to make them uh you know generally in a uniform fashion uh quarterly so then we have that information pulling forward to the bottom line here Let's go back to our first page of the uh, 1120. So we're back to our income statement on the first page, taxable income, then calculated down below. We have the tax being calculated at the 35517. Uh, now we have the estimated payments at the 380,000. Therefore, we have the overpayment, overpayment of the 29483. So then the question is, do we want the overpayment refunded to us or we can have it uh, be applied to the next time period? So typically, uh, oftentimes we would want it applied, right? Any kind of overpayment in the current time period, probably, let's say, let's make that the first quarter payment for the next year. So this is 2019. Rather than writing us a check, let's make this 29483 applied to the next year. So I'd like to apply it out here then. So let's see if we can tell ourselves we're credit to 2020 and we're going to say apply the first quarter uh, apply the entire refund estimated if necessary so we'll say let's check that and go back to our forms and so now we're going to apply the entire refund to the first quarter of the next time period and that's going to be useful again you can see this pretty clearly on the first page of the 1040 so it's not one of those things that you you have to do because in other words if we didn't roll over the tax return from the prior year, uh, we could pretty clearly see that, that, that that's been applied down here and we can enter it into the current year. However, I, I still think it's, you know, it's just another one of those things that from the prior year that affects the current year that would roll over smoothly if you had basically put the prior, the prior year tax return in or obviously if it's a continuing client, for example, this 29483, We'll simply roll forward to the next year, 2020, when we do the tax return, as uh, that that first payment that we'd have on the Schedule L. In other words, next year, we would see that first payment rolling forward uh, up here in that 80,000 section of the overpayment. So next year, we'd have an overpayment for 2019 applied to 2020, and the software would would basically take care of that, which is nice. Now it's just it shouldn't that shouldn't change anything in terms of the taxable income calculation, which of course is what we've been focusing in on here. Our primary goal, the most difficult thing to do with the tax preparation, is to tie out the the income calculation. Then we kind of rely on the software to apply the the tax system, the rates to it to calculate the rates. Then we look at the other side, the other side being the payments that have been made for it. So we shouldn't have a change here then to our our taxable income that we've been focusing in on. Let's check our balance sheet just to make sure that we are still in balance. We still in balance down here. So that looks good. So everything looks good uh, going forward.